600. If I may, if I'm right, and they were able to get down what you people are going to pay on a yearly basis, so you can have license to use a musical works of the artists that are members of MCSM. And I think it, it comes down to as low as 12,500 naira a year. Unfortunately, the number of people that are skied into this program is very abysmal. And it, it doesn't tell good of this association. But why am I here? We are the regulatory bodies. I know the jam might not have the where without to like enforce this. We are not concerned about people joining your association or not. Because eventually they must have to enjoy the association. They must join the association, whether they like it or not. Simply because it creates an opportunity for them to pay that low figure. Because if you go individually, it's going to be very high. It could be 10 times that amount or more. It is ten, more than 10 times that amount. So it's, it's an opportunity for you to join. For those people that say, ah, we work in these lounges. After all, they've been graded and they are paying X, Y, Z amount. Oh, we work with this radio t station. Oh, we work with this um, nightclub and everything. But you work in those places and you still go out and do your PP. And you still make money from them. If you say you work in that radio station, why not stay there? And don't go out to naming ceremonies. Don't go out to bed days. Don't go out to wedding ceremonies. So we are appealing to you. In the southeast, I just don't know whether there are more than 10 DJs that are uh, programmed. So we are appealing to you to get into this initiative. It's a good one for you all. And by the way, the new Copyright Act, the criminal liability is very stringent. Take, for instance, section 44, subsection 7 of the Act. See, when you offer to the public a copyrighted work, without authorization and people have access to it. Whether you are offering it through wire or wireless means and people have access to it and use it for commercial purposes. On conviction, it is one million naira or five years, a minimum of five years imprisonment. That means it could be more. So we have to be careful in what we do. So, as the regulatory body, we hope that, like we keep saying, we will protect the right of users and creators alike. So, we are appealing to you to keep doing the right thing so that you don't fall foul of the law. Thank you very much and God bless you. Okay, thank you very much. Please put your hands together for him one more time. God bless you, sir. That's a very wonderful speech. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're making it. We just uh, omitted something of which I want to correct that impression. Now, I want to call on uh, the national president to come out and give us a quick speech. Let me say uh, an opening remark, his own. That's what we're supposed to do immediately after the state chairman, but so unfortunate we omitted it. So ladies and gentlemen, please kindly put your hands together for Mr. Tadi Adeyemi. That's the national president of the Jan. I am talking of no other person but international DJ Cool. A round of applause please ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. DJs. DJs. DJs, um, I just want to 
standing on the existing protocol, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to specially welcome all our special guests in the house, uh, from the NCC to the radio house, our fathers, our elders in the house, all the uh, national officers, uh, state chairmen, and uh, from various states of the federation, and to all the members, I want to say thank you for turning up for today's program. Please give yourself a big round of applause. You know, when you tell people that DJing is not an easy job, you can now see that simply because they pour water on a MCC amp, but he has forgotten that the microphone he's using is not paying for it. And when they spray him at the parties, he will run away with the money. Meanwhile, he's using somebody's uh, microphone. Don't worry, we'll put water on this microphone. They will now know what is going to start. Uh, the next uh, line of uh, business they will go into. So that's to show you how important DJ is in the entertainment industry. Please, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much to say this morning because the meeting as at yesterday night was not an easy one. But I want you to understand one thing. If you don't promote yourself, nobody will promote you. Let's respect this profession. Let's start thinking now what we are going to do in the next few years to come. Let me break it down for you. In the time past, the so-called P-square, the bunch, and what have you, they were running after DJs to play their music, true or false. They will run to you at a party, in the nightclub, anywhere, radio stations, for music, right? But nowadays, it seems as if it's the other way around. It is the DJs that are now running after the artists. How? You go to not just OK, Niger.com, whatever. To do what? To download. We are now paying for the music. You understand? One way or the other. But remember, we are just stealing it. It is not our own. Anything that is not yours is not yours. So let's try as much as possible to pay that stipend. Let's leave. NCC and MCSN to do their work. For the majority of you who are here yesterday, uh, the chairman of uh, the Giant Cardona State Chapter gave a very simple analysis how you can go about it so that your own state, you understand, can excel. He gave a simple analysis yesterday. The MCSN, the NCC will do their job. One thing I know about NCC is that they don't tell you where they are going to operate. You can just be playing here. They will just sit down outside and you think they are part of you. And they will just come. Meanwhile, the police are around. They will just ask you one or two questions. Finish. Don't fall into that stuff at all. Don't fall into it because it's not easy. If you are charged to court, cannot escape because all the music you have been playing they have it recorded i'm telling you the truth they have it, they will not be playing with for you with the time and everything and even with the mc as is uh, everything you understand so they will just present it at the court and once you are charged to court you can't escape it it's either you pay one million or you go to prison. God forbid. I don't want any of my members to go to prison. Please, let's do the right thing at the right time. Let's forget about what had happened in the past. Let's do what is present so that we can move forward. Please, let's respect this work. 10,000 cannot sustain you. This morning, we bought fuel of uh, how much? 
the, it was not up to nine liters. So we are now, I was asking, are you sure the meter is working? He said, it's working. So if you start collecting 10,000, 10, tell me, when are you going to buy bicycle? No. Remember, all this um, equipment we are using now, they are not manufactured in Nigeria. Un unless you are lucky to have a good uh, repairer who can repair it for you. So when you start collecting 10,000, how many 10,000 will buy SS2? Let's be frank with ourselves. Let's upgrade ourselves. Let's talk to ourselves. See, let me tell you something. If you have a customer, if he calls you for a job, you understand? He's your customer. If he's going to give you that job, he's going to be... Don't, see, don't put yourself down because you want to get that job. If you do that, you know, that's your level. And that person, when he, when he or she wants to have a bigger event, he will call another person. Because he has already discovered that, um, uh, what is it called? Naming ceremony. Uh -huh. You are there. He will call you for naming ceremony. You understand? But uh, when they want to open their house, he will not call you because you are not a big DJ. You can make yourself big by saying no to all those rubbish money. You cannot die. People that want you will definitely look for you, no matter what. And they will pay your price. Look, I came from Abuja. People say Abuja is different from Enugu. Forget it. DJ na DJ. Have you ever seen any DJ that is using head to play? You are, we are using hands. You see, when you maintain your standard, your standard is your standard. People that want you, they will come for you. So don't lower your standard because you want money. Please, don't lower your standard for anybody. But another important thing, if you want to collect 300,000 from a customer, you cannot be wearing a... What's the name of that uh, slippers? Uh, that rubber stuff. Clogged, or what do they call it? Clock. <laughs> Because the man, the person will look at you. You want to collect 300,000. You, and you appear tattered and everything. He will not respect you. He or she will not respect you. You know, let's form that habit. As a DJ, you understand? You are representing an industry. You understand? So when you go out, you don't need to buy 100 million, 100 million shares or but on point. You understand? Something simple. T-shirt. Canvas. You understand? So when you are talking, the person will know that he will first look at you. That, oh, okay. I think this guy. Because somebody is recommending you. He or she doesn't know you. So when he meets you, the person will say, okay, yes, this guy watch it. Okay, please, I want, the next thing, I want good music. No, I want good, that's all. Please, I'm begging all of you today, uh, I don't follow books. You understand? I say it as it is. Please, let's, you know, let's make this industry. Let's make it this. Let me tell you something. You know, in the course of this conference, you know, we are discussing, let's bring. Look, you are a list DJ. Those people called a list DJ, they, they don't have three hands, they only have two hands. It's because of packaging. It's because of packaging. There are categories of DJs. There are about two DJs. You know. Those ones, they can scratch with their teeth. Those are the battle DJs. There are party DJs. But it's all, you know in Nigeria, we just believe DJ is DJ. You get. Because when you go abroad, you have concert DJs. You have gospel DJs. You see, when you, once you go online, you will see it. That's where the customers go. It's only here in Nigeria, boo, 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 everything. Just call me, I did. We have everything. But you cannot be master of all. That's why sometimes constant training matters a lot. And right now, let me talk to the so-called uh, club DJs or um, lounge or something. 
please, in the name of God, I believe every state chapter has, has lawyers. When you are going to claw, you understand? Don't kill yourself. You shouldn't work more than three days. You shouldn't work more than three, three days in a week so that you can have time to do research. Many DJs doesn't do that. You can say we, the OGs. Yes, we do that. Because you need to, you understand, reboot. You need to reboot. But because you work seven days in the lounge or nightclub, you don't even have time even to even take care of yourself. Then when do you, now the money you are making, when do you want to spend, how do you want to spend it? With who? When you, all your lives, you work in the, in the club seven days a week. Is that good? Please, think about it. And lastly, if you are called by any club, ask your state chairman to give you lawyer to represent you. I'm telling you the truth. You will see that the, the club owners will respect you. I'm telling you the truth. Because if you don't have any concrete agreement with any club, any refrap that you can't... Nobody go come to your house, come carry you. Nobody go come to your house, come carry you, say, I won't promote you. There was an event I went to, that was last, uh, last year. An event I went to, an event I went to, the DJ. When I saw speaker, speaker reached like, like 30 speaker. Old, old speaker, like 30. Then if you now come to the DJ stand, like where this guy is staying right now, the cable there is like 500 cable. Cable cover amp. It remains the moment the cable cover the DJ. Another kind of thing, they make MC go talk what he's not supposed to talk. Immediately I see the DJ, he can't still wear barrier clothes, come. You understand? As I see the DJ, I can't ask myself, if from Berry, I come here. You understand? As time goes on, I don't know when I won't call him. I won't call a name. I can't call him DJ Cable. The guy can't invest for me. But now the way he can package himself. You understand? Nobody say this young man here, Synergy, better pass all of my way here. But now the way he package himself. I use him as an example because now my, my, my man way back. But the way the guy, the guy take fly above other DJs way day before him, he shocked myself. Now the way you carry present yourself, package yourself. So I beg, as a DJ, not be every event you go to go. Package yourself very, very well. I love DJs. Any event where I go, any event I step my feet and there's no DJ there, I feel like I am not there for an MC job. Yes, I feel like just, I should just go home. There must be a DJ. DJs are the life of every occasion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to call on uh, my own brother. I'm talking about the man that took me as his own brother, not knowing he was my brother when we first met each other years back. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a friend and a brother and one of the major head, top head of the Jan National. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be calling on him right now to come give us just uh, let me say, 10 minute speech briefly before we get straight now to the next in our agenda. Please put your hands together for International DJ Perfect. He stands to be the Vice President National Dijan. Thank you very much. DJs. DJs. My dear National President, outgoing. My dear friends, the National East Coast, our state chairman, our host, my dear friends and colleagues, I'd like to welcome all of us for this August occasion in June. When I was coming, I was not informed I'm going to do any speech here. So I am not prepared for any speech. But what I will do is to welcome you and tell you that our profession is a good one. Because I am not prepared to make any speech, let me just discuss feeding. Very, very important. Feeding 
and our health. That is part of the hazards of the job. We must learn to feed before we go to event. Because uh, all of us knows when you have event today, MC have event today, Ketra and every other person that makes up the entertainment circle, the first person they call every morning, very early in the morning, is the DJ. We're in the hall, we are making space for you. Where would you like to stay? In fact, some will not even ask you, where would you like to stay? They'll say, why are you not here by this 6 a.m. to set up for an event that will start by 1 p.m.? We come on time, we go last, and they will not give us food. They don't give us food, they don't give us drinks. So I want to tell us, I want to advise us, for you to be on the safe side, for you to live longer, learn to eat before you go to event. If they give you, that is extra, but it is your right. Please, if they give you, make sure you eat. That one is not part of packaging.
that the entertainment sphere, the DJs and, uh, especially, need to tap into because if they cannot tap into that, the world is moving away from the regular TV and radio. That is the truth. Radio and TV now has gone to the social media, if you have noticed. There's no reputable radio station or TV station that does not have a social media um, handle, whether it's TikTok, whether it's um, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the social media, you could tell that there is more um, advertisement that goes to the social media. You could tell uh, from the budgets for the social media that this is where exactly the money is going to. So a lot of people have tapped into this. Here in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, they're making a lot of money from the social media. So it's a, a very veritable tool that we could make use of uh, uh, to improve our business. Well, when we get on these uh, social media um, uh, portals, we can actually use our phones. We don't have to have maybe a social media manager if we cannot afford it. You could use your phones. Most people broadcast a lot of things um, on their phone almost every day. You have your status. You can actually do broadcast messages it was difficult before when we had to do bulk messages. But on your phone, you can actually have your a list of people that you can send uh, some stuff to. If you have a mix, if you have a, a funny a meme or video that leads to what you have done or an event where you have played, it's very easy to compile a list on your phone and send to people on your list. You never can tell who is going to share that because that is the beauty of the social media. It is very easy to share. But you have the content. You churn out content every week. The way you uh, move from a particular song to another song might be different from how any other DJ has tried it. The way you move from one um, BPM to another BPM, these are some of the things that make you different. And also the rich knowledge of music you have. Most people have music on their phones, but they might not be. In fact, many of them are not as gifted as DJs. Because most of them who are dedicated to their job know music more than many other people. They listen to other genres of music. They listen to folk music. They listen to the less popular music. They listen to rock. These are some of the genres that are not very popular here in the country. And we can actually make a living out of playing those things that are not popular and pushing it. We can start with our immediate friends. We can start with where we work. We can start with uh, radio stations. There are radio stations that are more than happy to have DJs come play for them for free. It is difficult running a radio station. I can tell you from my own point of view. But there are stations that will be happy to have something fresh. Maybe they've had a DJ that's played for three, four, five years. And you can offer something fresh, something new, spontaneous. Even if it is once a week, the sheer number of people who listen to you on radio... It's probably in Enugu, probably up to 2 million or 3 million at a particular time. Now, when you combine it with the social media, it is possible that you could have close to 200 or 300 people who are listening and watching what you're doing in other parts of the world and also in the country. And that also could metamorphose to more business for you. It could help you get more clients and all of that. It also builds your reputation. So when... Um, a multinational comes into Enugu and they ask, oh, who are the top five uh, DJs? They might not ask anyone. They probably just go to their phones and search top five DJs. And if what you have is not on the internet, it's not going to pop up anywhere now. But if what you have is on your social media, it probably will be among the top ten things that would pop up. If you were to search top ten DJs in Enugu, would you be proud to see your name there? It's a big question you need to ask yourself when you're leaving here. And that would make you take the social media serious. Someone came to me this morning and uh, she brought a deal to my station. And part of the reason she came to my station was because she Googled top stations in Enugu. And my station came in first three stations in Enugu. And she asked, she had already gone to another station, please, can I get contact to this station? Because you could see literally what we do every day on our station. So it's very, very important. There's no need over flogging this, but if you do not have 
social media following if you don't have a social media account whether it's facebook facebook is the most popular in nigeria you should open it right now you should also think about twitter because that takes you outside the shores of enugu or rather outside the vicinity of enugu outside the shores of nigeria too there's tiktok there's youtube make sure you have these platforms working for you because if you're not it's possible in the next few years people would leave you younger djs would leave you dj um uh, grandfinger's son i i know he's a dj too he will come and leave you and his father is still playing so there are younger djs who are doing newer things crazier things i don't know if anyone has heard of dj cassidy here does anyone uh, know dj cassidy anyone one person too dj cassidy brought the world together between covid period and uh, 2022 he was talking to artists who had done great things in different parts of the world from his room so they set up their own studio in their own house he's in his own place via video calling he introduces the artist and the rest of people are streaming and watching what he's doing so for a award ceremony that could not take place in one place because of covid restrictions and um, all the other things that came with covid he was able to unite the rest of the world to enjoy music and that was because of the social media if he was not social media savvy or he was not thinking about that he probably would not go into that and he started djing many years ago at a time he was making at least hundred thousand us dollars every night that's how big dj cassidy is in the united states maybe that's a far fetch from us but we have djs in this country who are earning mad mega money but like um the other speakers had uh, spoken earlier on your packaging is important but if you package and you're not on the social media it ends within enugu or maybe abakaliki or ka or where that's where it ends but when you package and put it on the social media it pushes you outside to places you don't even uh, imagine that uh, your content will get to so and i guess uh, that's pretty much uh, what uh, i could uh, handle this afternoon i hear we need to be pretty fast so we finish early so uh, mc I uh, guess uh, this will be the much I can handle, unless you guys want me to go on. Thank you very much. That's a good one. Please put your hands together for him once again. That's uh, Mr. Richard Asiebu. Thank you very much for that wonderful speech. But uh, not be everything where you talk, they hear. You understand? But it's a good one. Uh -huh. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to officially recognize the presence of our barrister Onyabo, a legal practitioner in our midst. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you. When you go, no say DJ work hard. Now, when you go, go occasion, go jam DJ will be a bino. Bros, nobody had to talk to Najoka day. Not take a person. Ah, my man, offer. Oh boy, I go occasion, go jam DJ. Where be Abino? It's like the DJ play me flavor, play me flavor. He go look me. MC, you know day. And this song wait, let me keep play. He go look you. MC, you know day. If you can't ask her which one day, he go send her the video now I get. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, this is time for questions for those that have uh, questions that they want to ask if you have questions you want to ask please feel free this is time for questions it's an interactive segment if you have questions please just raise your hands so I'll come to your table and give you the microphone if you have questions you would love to ask please there's no time Okay. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Richard Asiebu. Richard Asiebu is uh, a junior. We call him junior because the father used to be a veteran. He's still a veteran. 
These are uh, earlier people who served in our sports text at Radio Nigeria. My name is Sir Emmett Mbelo. I retired yes. as director of marketing in Radio Nigeria about 10 years ago. So, um, my friend DJ Roland brought me here. So, I can't feel comfortable going like that without making one of you, making a few comments about what is trending now in the country. One of the greatest problems you guys have is how to fight quackery. There are a lot of quacks in this business. And you guys have to work very hard to devise a system how to fish them out. Because these are the guys who can collect 5,000 and 10,000 as someone stated here earlier. They are ready to collect any amount of money to go about messing up the profession. Whether you like it or not, this jockey is now a noble profession. It is a profession where you have doctors, you have engineers, you have the most bright brains, in, 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 not only in Nigeria, even all over the world. So we have to take this very serious and find a way of sanitizing the system. Again, you have to be current and be able to flow with the with current technology. You can't be a good disc jockey if you are not current with the technology of what is going on all over the world. Because the world is fast changing on a daily basis. So for you to be effective and have control of what is happening, you have to be highly knowledgeable and you have to be able to scan around the world and know what is happening. And I guess that was what uh, uh, Richard Asiebu Jr. was saying when he said you have to be able to be on the social media. If you are not on the social media, you are just not there. So, uh, everybody who calls himself or herself a disc jockey, you have to really be ready for the job. The days where it is everybody's business is gone. Now, it's a highly professional, professional field where you have to prove yourself to be able to uh, fit in with the modern trend. Also, uh, one of the speakers also made a statement about packaging. Your packaging matters a lot. You cannot be going for a function as a disc jockey and you are wearing uh, uh, bedroom slippers to uh, a function. But this, it does happen. These are where some of these uh, quacks that feel, feel that there is no need. Wherever, whatever matters, what you do is just go there to play music. But we've gone beyond just going there to play music. We are now in a modern world where a disc jockey is involved in so many things, particularly information, what is going on around you and other places of the world. So I feel that with this few comments, I wish you guys a very happy deliberation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a very good one at that. Please put your hands together for him one more time. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, um, like I said, I said this is, uh, this is the interactive uh, segment, but uh, nobody wants to ask any question. All right? But as it starts right now, we don't have time, much time anymore. So at this point, I want to quickly call on uh, DJ Sako. DJ Sako. He's coming out here to talk to us on the signs of disc joking. Ladies and gentlemen, please kindly put your hands together for him. God bless you. Uh, please, um, be, once he starts talking, please, nobody should step out again. That's a very important information from the national president himself. He said nobody should go out, no DJ should go out of this hall. From now, all right, see the, the occasion is over. No DJ should leave this hall. Please listen attentively so we can all learn. Thank you. DJs. DJs uh, standing on the existing protocols. First and first, I would like to say I am honored to have been given this lecture 
to take on. Because um, I haven't looked around everybody here, the faces and the people I've met since last night till this morning. I want to say I'm too small to stand here and talk to everybody. And I want to take permission from the elders in here this afternoon. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit shaky because I'm nervous. I'm very sorry about that. Um, sir, please, can I go back in the memory lane and talk about DJ? DJs, I'm going to be talking about the art and science of this joking. Art and science. What is the art? Let's pick it from there. Art is an expression made by a human to create something either in moving or in painting or whichever form you want to bring it out. That is what is called art. And what do you say is science? You can still go to your dictionary and find out what art is. I don't want to take much time, so I'm just to be, I, I will just be cutting it a little bit, a little bit, bit by bit, so I will make my point. The science is a systematic study of structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. I don't know if that really sink. I will get somewhere. This definition was taken from the dictionary. Just for me to be able to put it out there for you to understand what the science is. And initially, I already talked about what the art is. Now, you're putting the systematic study with you creating something with art or vice versa. Because these two things work equilibriumly. It goes this way, and it also comes this way. Just like you are putting H2O, you put hydrogen, two hydrogen plus oxygen here, and you come here, you get water. It can still go the same way backwards. I'm talking to the chemistry student. I'm sorry if I'm using that terminology. Going forward, the, what is a disc jockey? A disc jockey is commonly, is abbreviated to be called a DJ. And it is someone who puts, who play already recorded music to an audience. Well, it sounds very cheap, but there are still more things to dive into. But like I said earlier, I have to cut it bit by bit for me to make a particular point. Please follow me as I'm cutting this thing short by, by bit by bit because I'm getting to a point whereby what I'm saying now will be needed. Then, I want to go, like, that's why I took um, a little bit of, I took uh, permission from my ogres. The word disc jockey, abbreviated to be DJ. It was, it was coined by the radio gossip by a person known as Walter Winchell. That was in 1935. It's a radio gossip, right? Someone on radio making a gossip. He coined out the word Dick Jockey in 1935. And in 1941, it was published for the first time on Variety Magazine. That was the first time a word DJ ever written down on any magazine. I'm getting somewhere. Now, talking about DJs. We all call ourselves DJs. DJ this, DJ that. But we have difference. There are DJs with difference. We have radio DJs. We have dance or reggae DJs. You can also call, call the dance or radio uh, dance or DJ. You can call them Selector or Sanjay. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Those DJs in Jamaica, DJ, please. Do you have some rhythms? Some rhythm sound. You know, there's some sound in Jamaica. 
they have different sound. You can hear about five, six, seven of them. Different artists on it, but have the same beat. I don't know if we've, if we've ever come across such beats. They call them rhythms. And they are pop the popular artists in this particular genre are Vibe Cartel, Busy Signal, um, uh, uh, um, uh, I can't remember much of them right now. What was it? Demako. Um, Demako, yes, Demako. To name few. Then, when I'm talking about this DJ, different type of DJs, I was also talking about mobile DJ. Mobile, we have, okay, I'm talking about different DJs with, with their category. I mentioned radio DJs. I mentioned um, dance or reggae, um, dance or reggae DJs. A turntable list. A turntable list, who are those people? Like the um, national president mentioned back then, he said, we have battle DJs. Turntable list are those DJs that manipulate sound using the vein. What do we mean by the vein? That record where Papa and Mama they use that year. That big one. Through which process they put the vein on the right or the left and manipulate the sound. Either the vocal or the beat using the crossfader to cut across each of those sound. Either dicing or backstroking baby scratch, and lots more. I thought I'd be working with DJ Vicky Lee on this particular topic because there's something he was supposed to do for me while I'm saying things like this. Then we have a um, mobile DJ. Now you'll be able to categorize yourself. Who are those mobile DJ? Those DJs that move from one hall to the other, from one... That move from one hall for a wedding to the other, or move from one birthday party to the other, or move from one particular naming ceremony to the other one. Those are the ones called the mobile DJ. Then we have hip hop DJs. Who are hip hop DJs? Hip hop DJs are those DJs that play strictly only hip hop sound. Example, DJ Jassy Jeff. I don't know if you know DJ Jassy Jeff. We have DJ Bastard. DJ Cool. Those are people that... Those are people that... Are, they are turntable list, one. And two, they are battle DJs as well. Hip hop DJ, you can still categorize them under it because they pack all these things and be under one and, and just decide to stay under the umbrella. Because um, looking at the scene, looking at the scene internationally, I, uh, a particular hip hop DJ can actually do a lot of things. That is why I decided to call these three names and group them under a uh, tentative list, Scratch DJ, and also hip hop DJs. Then resident DJ. As this hotel is, this particular place we are right now, there's a DJ that plays constantly here. Every evening or every weekend, he or she resumes here. Those are the people called resident DJs. No leave, no transfer. This is the only place where they work. But in Nigeria, We've been able to manipulate around this whole thing that a mobile DJ can do a work of a resident DJ. A resident DJ can do a work of a mobile DJ. Making it, making it, making it difficult to separate the DJs and put them in their categories. Then, like I said earlier, a DJ that play hip hop. What do you call them? Hip hop DJs. There are some DJs that play only house music. Just house. What do you call them? House DJs. There are some DJs that play techno, only techno. What do you call them? You call them techno DJs. 
In Nigeria right now, we have some DJs that play only at my piano. I'm a piano, the carriers go where we don't know. You are free to call them what? I'm a piano DJ. There are some DJ right now that plays conga. That plays conga. If you call them conga DJ, make them no verse. Understand? And very soon, yesterday I had somebody saying, Oja is coming to take over the world. So, very soon we'll be having Oja DJs. Very simple. And there are some DJs, back, um, moving back, back in 2015, I was able to play in one club in Abuja called um, A Lounge. And that was where I was opportune to have my first international um, interview on Decibel Radio in the United Kingdom. And I was asked a simple question. Why is it that in Nigeria, you DJs are able to put a lot of music, a, a lot of genre together and just mix it in one strange? Unlike what it used to be back in the days. Techno DJs, Amapiano DJs, Conga DJ and stuff like that. I told them that is how we were that is where we were, uh, this is how we were groomed to be. Provided we can beat match it and play it. And it sounds good to the ear. It goes. And such things became what we call a multi general DJs. And when you are saying what is a multi general DJ, you can also call them what, what is called a fluid DJ, a, a general fluid DJ. Those are the DJs that can play techno, play house, play deep house, play ama piano, play EDM, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Oja, Conga, play everything together. Miss Kobo, you can call them, feel free to call them fluid, uh, general fluid DJ, or you call them multi general DJ, which is what. 99.9 or 99 .9 of everybody in this room are right now. Now, moving forward. What is the main features of a DJ? Don't forget, I'm still, go, I'm still talking about the art and science of DJing. What is the main feature of DJs? The main feature of DJs is when that thing is placed in front of you. Either it is SR2, SB3, or you have new Mac M3. You have um, Miss Track Pro, whichever player that is in front of you. Before you, before two three seconds, you can tell your brain can calculate about seven things to do about that deck at that particular moment. Before ten seconds, your brain, which is the technical skill aspect of it, when the player land in front of you, or you seeing the player first, you've already think about seven things I can do with this player. The technical skills. That's the main key feature I see when it comes to DJing. And talking about skills, to break things down, like um, my chief here has spoken, I'm sorry, I don't know, I've forgotten his name, from the radio station. Mr. Richard Asiebu. As, as spoken earlier on, the chairman spoke, and um, the Southeast also says something about this particular topic I'm treating right now. I just talked about gear. You have your player in front of you. Now I want to speak about the five elements to DJ success when I talk about skills. What are those five elements? I don't want you to believe me because I'm too small to talk about this. But the five major elements is number one, your gear. The music you are going to play. Your techniques. Your playing out. And everybody here has said something about what? Promote yourself. Your gear, which is your player. Number two, which is your music. Number three, your techniques. Number four, 
your output. That is whatever it is that you play out. Number five, you promote yourself. And when you have these five, ele you have these five elements to DJ success, you repeat it again and again and again and again. That is why one set is never enough for any DJ. We keep buying. When it comes out, we buy. When it comes out to do what? We buy. Now, the art and science of DJs in combined. I'm going to be reading. Creative expression and technical skills to craft and mix music in a way that captivates an audience. DJ curate and manipulate record, uh, recorded music to create seamless transition, energetic performance, and unique sonic experience. Should I come again or should I move on? The art and science of DJing in combined. Whole thing sharp, sharp, and random. It is said, it's the creative expression and technical skills to craft and mix music in a way that, that captivates an audience. A DJ curates and manipulates recorded music to create seamless transition, energetic performances, and unique sonic experience. Hello? DJs? Then, what is the artistic element of DJing? I lay out two of them. The artistic element of DJing, which is your music selection and your, creativ your creativity. Your creativity in mixing two music together. Like Mr. Asuigu said earlier, the way, Mr. DJ, the way DJ A will mix his own music is different from the way Mr. B will mix his own music. And it's, the way every DJ mix their song here is different from each other, no matter how, how, how similar it might sound. So, the artistic element of DJing here is your music selection and your, creative in, your creativity in mixing techniques. You know what the techni uh, mixing techniques is? Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what the uh, mixing techniques are, which are your beat matching, your your um, your blending, your harmonious mixing, and all that, which I'll be, which introduce me to what is called harmonious mixing. What is harmonious mixing? Harmonious mixing is the way you mix two songs together, and nobody will feel the difference between those two songs. Hello? What is harmonious mix? I said harmonious mix is the way you mix two songs together without the listener, the audience, noticing the difference between them. And when this comes into existence, in the year 2000, DJ Vicky Lee, um, in the early year of 2000 or 1990, or 1990s, in the, 90, in the 90s and early 2000, when mixing key was integrated into Serato Scratch Live. I know some of us use Serato Scratch Live before it became D Serato DJ and Serato DJ Pro. Right? Then mix in key was integrated into Serato Scratch Life 2.5 before it was discontinued and moved into Serato DJ, then Serato DJ Pro, which is which is break down into four places. We have open tag, open key, camelot key, classic keys. These keys are four keys that were integrated into Serato, Serato DJ Pro 2.0.6. And as at this morning, we have 2.0.7. I mean, 3.0.7 this morning. When we're talking about open key tag, original tag, Camelot keys, or classic keys, are the major keys that are used 
in carrying out this harmonious mix. If you check your library and you have opened, if you have go to your settings and make sure you unveil your key to Camelot keys, you will see something on anytime you analyze your key, you analyze your music, you see something like 2A, 2B, 2, um, 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, and so on. Those one, those keys are not just there for you to look at them, how colorful they are. They are used to mix music harmoniously. So when you are bit matching and you use the law of harmonious mixing through Camelot keys, you can arrive at you can arrive at mixing two songs, bit matching two songs together without anybody telling the difference between the two, between these two songs. And I think this happened mostly between what we know as reggae beats. When you are playing reggae beats, for example, you are mixing something like um. You are mixing something like, like a lucky rhythm with um, with Ashao Fireboy. When you mix these two, so, two, these two songs together, they sound very, very alike, but not in the same key. I don't want to dive into key because that is not the reason why we are here. Then a DJ should be able to read his or her crowd when he's on, when he's performing his uh, set. Now, this introduced me to the science element of DJing. Everything I've just been saying is about the art. This, this brings me to the science element of DJing, which is number one on my list is the equipment and the technology. DJ, DJ now work with a range of equipment and technology. We still use stunt table. Now we have controllers up and down. Back in the days, we have to buy Excel to connect our Excel. We connect it and put CD inside. And now that we are using controller, have you ever thought about what is making this controller manipulate what is on my software? That introduced me to what is called a time code. That is the science. What is a time code? A time code is a signal, a noise, a signal noise. That was generated and pasted on a VIN or a CD to manipulate a digital file. What is a digital file? Your MPEG-2, MPEG-3, MPEG-4, which we literally call MP2, MP3, MP4. Back then when we are using um, XL and we started using turntable, just put those CDs in and just listen to it. The only thing you hear is the holo sound. That sound this way. That sound is the sound that, man, that gives you that power to manipulate your digital file through your software. Moving forward. Your bit matching and phrasing. Though I've already talked about bit matching, I don't know if I should talk about it again, but let me just move forward. I'm talking about time code that was given to us back in the years when Scratch Live was introduced, which was later integrated into mixers, uh, um, uh, mixers and controllers. In the recent time, last year, early last year, a new bomb baby was introduced, was introduced into the science world of DJing. It comes as a trial for DJs to try. It came in, it stayed there, some DJ were using it. We used some DJ used it, it was crashing, and this year it was perfected. And it was given to us as an add-on to our DJ science, to add to our science DJ life, to our scientific DJ life, which is called, what is the name of this baby? I call this baby a Serato DJ Stem. It's a new baby that was introduced from last year, but was integrated properly this year. A DJ stem. What does DJ stem do? The DJ stem takes your digital file and breaks it down into four different stages, which is called your vocal, melody, bass, and drum. But to us, if you don't do your research, like um, my Ogaya said, if you don't do your research, you only think it's about Serato stem. That is the only thing you have. If you are not 
okay or comfortable with what serratus 10 is giving you you can also move to something else that is called we can move to something else that is called um, stem vata stem vata is another software that can do the same thing that um, serratus stem do for you sound engineering a DJ should be able to tell when you have a good sound and when your sound is not good enough. When your sound is not good, you don't expect to move people around with it. Like yesterday, I went to a particular lounge and when I got to the lounge, the sound wasn't moving. I have to leave the lounge and just go straight to my room and sleep because the sound was biting to the ears. Then, you know, mostly these days, we go online and see DJ manipulating digital files and we look at those DJ like they are doing some speed work some a different they are mixing different genre or they are mixing different vocal on different beats at a go that is where production comes in most DJ now as most DJ now diving into productions and working on their song before coming to their live set to record their live set to give to you as their daily routine example of a software you can use and start with is Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is a, is a production software you can start with and start making difference in your own sound as well. If you have a track from Mr. A, it, it, if you make a difference to it, it will sound differently from what I have, the original stuff I have. You can add any sound you want with it. You can use Serato Stem to create your, um, your um, um, instrumental and do whatever you want to do with it. Manipulate the sound. That is. Now DJ is becoming producers. We'll be hearing about DJ Kublon. DJ Kublon is a DJ. Same thing as Rexy, a DJ. But now they are producing and they are doing something good with it. I, I don't intend to take much time anyways, but before I leave this place, there are things I always think about. And it is, um, as young as I am, I know some of our A-list DJ has that. I'm talking to my young DJs that had the same drive as I had it. I had a fire in me. It was burning. DJ wasn't what I want to do because I want to get money from it. It was a passion. My question to you today is, what are your backup plan the day you hang that asset? What is going to be your backup plan when you hang asset that you are no more doing DJs? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying DJing is wrong. But what are your backup plan? Thank you. My name is My name is Ogini Olasukomi a.k.a. DJ Sako. Okay, please, um, is there any question you would, you would love to ask? This is time for question, please. Is there any question you would love to ask, please? Okay. Okay. I have somebody here. One bit. One bit. Well, mine is not a question, but just a small statement. When uh, DJ Sako was making his uh, presentation, he said a lot about Serato, and that brings my mind to what we waste our time doing in this country, rather than uh, DJs and leaders trying to assist and see how upcoming DJs can know better the science and art of DJing. Each time you open discussion about DJing, we spend so much time arguing about visual DJ versus Serato. And at some point, we begin to even measure who is a better DJ between someone who uses
virtual DJ and somebody who uses uh, Serato. But when you go outside this country, you listen to DJs, sometimes you wonder why there is an argument. Because right now, I, I don't know of today, but as at last month, the most expensive DJ software is Visual DJ. The most expensive is Visual DJ. When he's talking about the science and manipulations, where you see the best of manipulations for music is in Visual DJ. So let us allow DJs grow with what software and technology and science they can grow with. This issue of undermining DJs that have, uses a visual DJ, please, I think we shouldn't waste our time doing that. Let us teach people how to use these softwares better rather than trying to castigate them. Thank you very much. DJs. DJs. Um... In my, in my teaching, in my topic, I'm not trying to say one software is better than the other. Me, myself, and I, as I'm standing right here, I know how to operate virtual DJ to the fullest. The recent, actually, virtual DJ was the first software that came with STEM. Virtual DJ is the first software that came with STEM, not Serato DJ. So I'm only acting based on the popularly used software. That is what I'm talking with. But not saying Virtual DJ or Serato, anyone is better than the other. The both software are professional software. I don't know if I answer your question correctly. MC. Questions. Question from there, please. So who's asking the question? DJs. DJs. I'm not asking the question, but it's just like a contribution. Because I feel DJ is a very big thing. If we want to talk about DJ, it will not end today. So I feel DJ should be studied inside the university. I feel DJ should be a part of the music department. I feel DJ is a theology and it should be well studied. Because if you want to talk about the virtual DJ, you also want to talk the difference between the virtual DJ and the Serato. Then you want to talk about the different kind of DJs. Then you know a DJ is supposed to be a professor. Then you, we all supposed to be different kinds of DJs. I have a friend in UK that went to uh, UK to be a DJ as a Nigerian DJ in good Ah, I won't be DJ, I won't be DJ. They give her one lounge. They said, Before you be a DJ, you must learn how to hype. So he had to go back to hyping in London before he started DJing. So some DJs outside the country hype and DJ. But we in Nigeria, we DJ and we pay hype man to come and hype. You understand? So I feel if the next ESCO or the next regime should find a way to inculcate the DJ system inside the university, like the music department, most young ones want to study DJ. And when they put this, it will help the body as a DJ. And it will grow strong too. That's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good one. Oh, that hype side. I'm going to leave that side first. Any other question, please? DJs, DJs, as the PRO of Dijan Enugu, I am DJ Synergy, and uh, we've been hosting seminars to educate other DJs here in Enugu, of which we've done numerous and countless seminars in uh, briefing up and uh, beefing up our members to be best of themselves, as well as uh, bringing up their attires and getting themselves professional enough. Now, I want to talk about... Uh, in terms of uh, the mathematics involved in the science part of DJing, which involves quantization. Like most sets do have the quantized slot of which you can click on it. Now, I want to talk about the Google definition of quantization. It's called, is the process of mapping continuous infinite values 
to a smaller set of discrete finite values. Now, let me talk about this. Now, most, most people who are versatile with DJ sets and softwares, like myself, I can play virtual DJ very well, like mad. I can play it, you can think, say, na Serato I play. I can play Serato, record box, uh, whichever one you bring, good trash them, you understand? Now, some DJs will be talking about the calculation of sound. Now, you might bring out your set and your set might be ranging into 200. Or, let's, I mean, your BPM might be ranging into 200. A song of a 90 might be around uh, 180 in your BPM. Now, most DJs do make mistakes. They might not want to play that song. They might just skip it into the next song. Now, for you to play that song, it is just simple. Now, in terms of this uh, quantization, you need to, if it's 90, if, sorry, if it's 180, you get that 180 divided by 2. It will give you 90. If it's uh, 200 divided by 2, it will give you 100. If it's 160 divided by 2, you understand? And if you are playing a song on your left deck, which is 80, and then the next one that you want to play is an 160, you just times that 180 by 2. Whichever value it gives you, you will match the other one and then play it seamlessly. It won't even uh, disturb you. So um, this is just me talking about uh, the calculations involved. So if you have such difficulty as a DJ, just what you need to do is that, uh, get, keep your phone close and your calculator, get that uh, uh, number and divide it by two. Thank you. Before I say, before I continue I saying if there's any question, I want to, I want to, I want to talk, say something about, I want to say something about what you just said. Please, DJs, DJs, see, if you want to talk about software, we are not going to end this thing today. Understand? If you want to talk about anything, we are not going to end this today. But I have a question for you, DJ Synergy. You are not going to answer it here. We will talk about it. What about if you have three over four bits and it's giving you 98? How are you going to know the actual BPM? We'll talk about that later. See, when it comes to software, when you are, if you have any question, in short, if you have any question, please. If you have any question. DJs. DJs. I go, by, I go by the name DJ J. Bob. Please, I want to make a humble suggestion to our ESCOs, honorable ESCOs, and as well the incoming ones too, please. I want to plead, if, if you are very calculating or observant, listening from what my colleagues here just said, from DJ Synergy to DJ Jerry, as well, okay, as well to him over there. Um, that is exactly the point I want to raise here. My point is this. I want to plead with the current schools and the incoming one. Please, I know we, we might have been doing this, but it's not as punctual as expected. But I want to plead with us if it will be very possible for us to be impacting more and speeding more on our workshop. I think it will encourage more of us more better in this segment and as well to groom the upcoming DJs as well as to orient even the old ones more better. That is my humble suggestion. Thank you very much. Any other question before I drop the mic? One more question actually. One more question. Just one more. In the absence of no question, please permit me to permit me to bounce. I beg. Thank hey, you very hey. much. A round of applause for him once again. But um, um, DJ Grandfinger said there's something he wants to add to this. So briefly, not a question, not a question. DJs. Well, I go by the name DJ Grandfingers, and uh, there's something uh, DJ Sako just mentioned here, and I want to encourage every one of us, for those that might want to 
go further in uh, what they are doing in this jockeying. There's this software he mentioned, Adobe Audition. I will want to let everyone know that this is something that a software that will enhance whatever you're doing. Most of us here know that uh, I remix most uh, songs. I have some songs I've remixed. I used the Adobe Audition. If I do a mix and I want to master it, I use Adobe Audition. So um, I want to encourage everyone to download it and uh, learn how to use it. You'll find out that you will enhance whatever, um, um, what do I call it, creativity you have in you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crown Fingers. God bless you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, it is time. There's a question that he asked. He said, when you hang your headset, what is your backup plan? Yeah? <laughs> My brother, as an entertainer, you must have a backup plan. You understand? Because at the time, nobody be star forever. You understand? Get time we go rich like this. You have to diversify to make more money. You understand? So as an antenna or a DJ, you must have a backup plan. In case this one don't work, you can't join that one whole body. When you go no say the money where they get now, no, no to make sense. Now when you go marry, get children. You go understand the main reason of to have a backup plan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, I want to quickly call on uh, the CEO, the director of uh, Deep World Entertainment. He will come out here to give us a uh, a speech on that same issue, the backup plan, business, strategy, and innovation, success story. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Honorable Odera. God bless you. Thank you, MC Black. DJs! DJs! Come on, you guys are young guys. You should be active. Young guys are young women. DJs! DJs! All right, uh, my name is Odera. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Uh, it's not tonight, it's afternoon. Uh, let me stand on existing protocols, please. All right, I respect you, the president. Uh, Grand Finger, I'm happy to see you here. I hope you are doing fine. All right, now, uh, synergy, is this synergy? Where is synergy? Oh, you, how much time I got to speak? 20 minutes. All right, so let me know when I get to 20 minutes because my perception of time will not be the same with your own. I won't be looking at it. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say I'm happy to be here. I'm very, very happy to be here. You know, I've always been uh, happy working with the DJs. You can't say you are in entertainment or you are uh, running a record label and you will be an enemy to DJs, right? So that would be a problem. So that is the reality. So we have been working together, you know, since uh, 2020, and 20, still now, right? Grand finger. So I'm happy to be here. Now, um, Synergy and Youngest, they say that I should discuss on success story, business strategy, innovation, and success story. Now, uh, the problem I have is that I don't have a plan. I did not prepare for any discussion. But then he told me already, but we're going to discuss. I, I, I like not to prepare more than preparing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, the last person, DJ, the last speaker, the DJ with a very long name, the, where is the DJ? Yeah, DJ Sako. He asked the question. He said, uh, what is your backup plan when you drop your word, your headset? The, it simply means that success, because we are talking about success, right? It simply means that success is what? Success is a continuum. It is something you still, you keep working for until you are dead. So I like to face the reality. Success is what? A continuum. If you succeed today, you don't succeed tomorrow, then you are going to have what? A problem. In fact, you will not remember the success you had last time. If you eat this morning, and then the next morning, you are very hungry. You don't have food to eat. Will you recall the food you ate last time? No, you will not. So it simply means that as you are planning for the success of today, you must be planning for the success of what? Tomorrow. So you got to 
plan your success in a way that it is what? Sustainable. And it is what? Long term. Every human being wants to what? Succeed. That is why it is difficult and challenging. All the DJs here, everybody wants to be what? The best. That is why it's difficult and what? Challenging. If nobody is doing what you are doing, you are doing it only you, then you'll be an island. You will have no competition. But the reality is that life itself is what? A competition. Because some people are dead while you are what? Alive. All right. So I'm not going to be here to be teaching you how to succeed. Nobody can teach you how to succeed. That's what I believe. I believe that when we were born, we were born with what? success. But the challenge that we have is that sometimes we are not able to define what success means. Let me give you an example. When uh, DJ Youngest told me that I would come and you know uh, make a speech or engage with you guys with regards to success story, innovation and all that, I told myself something. I said DJ Youngest and DJ Jan have assumed that I'm successful. Yes. If you don't assume that I'm successful, you will not ask me to come and discuss about what? Success. How about if you're wrong? How about if you're wrong? You could be wrong. Let the biggest challenge I see about success is that we don't define our success. We allow other people to do what? to define success for us. Success is not rigid. It's not something you can touch. In reality, success is an imagination. It's something that you decide by yourself what is your success. Let me give you a very short story. If you remember when you were in uh, primary school, when I was in primary school, my vision by primary five was to be part of one particular secondary school. I wanted to enter there. If I achieve it, I, was, I will be very excited. I achieved that. That was what? Success. But then it didn't take long. I wanted to go to university. When I graduated from university, I was excited to start serving. It didn't take long. I needed something else. So success is something that has to continue in our lives. But what I find interesting about success is that when you start to decide and define what success means to you, that is when you actually start to succeed. Because if you don't do that and you allow other people to define what success means to you, you might succeed and still feel like you have what? Failed. For example, if you used to pride yourself that you are six feet tall and you feel like you are taller than everybody else, the day you find yourself in the midst of men who are eight feet tall, what will happen to you? You will feel what? Short. Why you will feel short is because you are deriving your height from every other person world around you. You are not deriving it from within you. So I believe that the first step for me in success is actually defining for yourself what success means what to you. So that when you achieve it, you will tell yourself that what you have what achieved success. Because what is the essence of success? Success makes us to feel good. Success makes us to be what? Happy. But you can be successful. And other people will make you to feel what? Unsuccessful. So first of all, for me, success is about you doing what? Defining for yourself what it means for you to be what? Successful. If you don't, if you don't define it, if you don't set a goal, then there is no way you will say you are what? Successful. So if there's something that I need to leave with you today, is very simple. Don't allow any human being define your success word for you. Because the truth is that 
Nobody really cares if you are successful. Nobody cares. The only person that is the architect of your success is what? You. If you are not successful, other people will be what? Successful. And you need to know that everybody will not be what? Successful. Some people will fail. And some people will what? Succeed. That is the natural law and process of life. So it's left for you to decide if you will be among those that will succeed or among those that will fail. So when you define your success, you have to work towards what? Towards your success. I need to work hard towards it. There's something I would like to leave with you this afternoon about success. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. You know, oftentimes we believe there's a shortcut to success. Sometimes we believe there's a shortcut to making what? Money. But those things you, you think that are shortcuts, at the end of the day, you realize, you realize they are what? Very long cut. The way to be successful is to define your goal and work yourself what? Very hard towards it. If you don't work hard, you will not succeed. If you don't believe in yourself, you will not succeed. I've done a lot of things in my life that many people ask me not to do it. I will give you just one example. I worked in the corporate world for many years. I worked in Guinness, I worked in Coca-Cola, Procter and Gamble, Cadbury. I worked in Nigeria, I worked in Africa, I worked in Europe for many years. Came back, and I did one stupid thing. I resigned. Do you understand what I mean? I resigned from my job at a director level without having any other job. I resigned because I had a vision. I told myself that if I could do this for somebody else, I can do it for myself. But I knew it was not going to be easy. But I was willing to take the risk because I believed in myself. So for me, it's very important how much belief you have in what you want to do and how much belief you have in yourself and how much passion you can be to follow the path you are following. Sometimes it might take long. I took a big risk. I followed through it. At a point, my mom was, you know, calling the whole village to have a meeting. Yeah, this guy is crazy. But I said, I'm not crazy. I'm following the path that I need to follow. And I'm sure it's going to be successful. And because I made that decision, I decided to adjust a lot of things about my life to fit into my plan. I paid sacrifice for it. And I followed it through. And in many years when it came true, it came true very well. When I look back, I told myself that you made the right word, decision. And the funny thing is that there are certain things you'll be doing, people around you will not understand it. Human beings will encourage you not to be what? Successful. Because they don't see what you see. I believe that success is what? A person. And that person is you. But you need to understand who you are as a person and know what you want to do. And I tell you the, one of the greatest parts I've learned about success. Yeah, I will end up with that. There's something I learned about success. And I'll tell you something about it. At a point in my life, I realized that human beings were more important to me than anything else. At a point, I realized it, that human beings are more important. And that is the fact. Human beings are more important than anything what else. All the prayer you are praying, all the prayer you are praying, there's just one human being. That will raise the finger and your life will do what? 
will change. But sometimes the human being has refused to do that. Maybe because of what you have done in the past. So some of us are not successful because we have not been true to our fellow human beings. We have caused a lot of problems. So in whatever you are doing to be successful, you have to ensure that you are fair in your dealings with your fellow human being. The man you see today that doesn't uh, look like he wants nothing tomorrow might be the what? The greatest. So to succeed, two things for me, yourself, believe in yourself, focus. Be ready to pay the price of what you want. And don't assume there are what? Shortcuts. And then we support each other. And that will help us to find breakthrough. But as I said, I believe in defining your success. I define my own success. That is why I feel that I'm what? Successful. When I achieve it. Okay? So basically, this is what uh, I have to discuss with you. So success begins with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. That's a very wonderful speech from uh, Odera. He stands to be the CEO of Deep Well Entertainment. And we say the director. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> the director of Deep Well Entertainment. He is one of the reasons why Enugu State Entertainment Industry is moving to the permanent side. Please put your hands together for him, please. He support us. Uh, say that, that he did not support you when you are hosting an event is that maybe you did not call him or did not tell him about it. That's the only way he will not support you. But once you call on him and say, hey, Odera, see, I have 100,000. I need 50K to complete my, my money to make up for this event. He will tell you, don't worry, I will give you 100K. Please put your hands together for him. God bless you, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are progressing to the segment of uh, the Enugu State uh, Access Com President. I'll be calling on my brother, MC I don't show. I've known this guy, this man, for more than 10 years. We've been through this entertainment job for many years and we've done a lot of things together. To the glory of God, he is the current, let me say, chairman, or let me say president of Enugu State Association of MCs and Comedians. Ladies and gentlemen, please, at this point, he'll be stepping out right now to talk to us on the relationship between MCs and DJs. My people, please put your hands together for no other person than the young man that goes by the name MC I don't show. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. My president, much respect to you, sir. DJs, DJs, I love being in the midst of the DJs. And uh, I've always been in the midst for a very long time. Like uh, Black MC said, I may look young, but I am old in the industry. <laughs> At least this year, 2023, we make it uh, 17 years as an MC. Shall I look young, Avi? I never reach 17. Eh? All right, we are here to talk about the relationship between the DJs and the MCs. Because um, in recent times, it has started looking like um, there is a war between the DJs and the MCs. But there is no war. Because the DJs and the MCs are no competitors. We are not in the same field. You have your own job. We have our own job. And it will interest everybody to know that uh, the two bodies need each other for us to be able to deliver in any event. Hello? First of all, there should be an essential communication between the DJs and the MCs. First thing I love doing whenever I arrive at any event is to meet the DJ. First thing, 
And when I meet the DJ, I try to find out, have you tried your microphone? Is every setup okay? How do you want us to run this event? That is communication. Let's talk. Let's understand ourselves. Because without understanding, for you to be able to deliver in any of your job, you must be satisfied with that job. And once you meet any comedian or MC in an event, and you begin to look down on that MC, trust me, you will be reluctant to work with the MC. And you may not be able to give in your best. So first thing we should look at is the communication between the DJs and the MCs. How well is the communication? The both parties need to communicate well for us to be able to achieve our goals in any event at all. Hello? Are we together? And then, apart from the communication, can we collaborate to work together as one in an event? The DJ plays the music, but trust me, the MC, in from aspects, complements the music. It takes a good MC to bring out the best in a DJ. And it takes a good DJ to bring out the best in an MC. When MC is bad, it affects the DJ. And when the DJ is bad, it affects the MC. So the collaboration between the DJ and the MC cannot be overemphasized. It is very, very important. The DJ must be open to work with an MC. And the MC must also be open to work with the DJ. Let me tell you one thing. If you, if you really want to work or grow past this state level, don't look down on anybody like Odera said. You may travel out of Enugu to meet a comedian you don't know before, an MC you don't know before. If you look down on that MC, the MC may turn out to be one of the best around. And you will notice that the both of you cannot work together. Not because the MC is not good, not you as a DJ is not good, but because there is no perfect collaboration between you and the MC. You will find out that the job may be difficult for the both of you. So you need understanding to work together as one. Because every client bringing a DJ and an MC to work together expects the best. In recent time, there has been an argument that uh, every MC should always come with their micro. <laughs> okay, now let's take that to the aspects of backup plan. If as a DJ you are going for an event and you drop your own microphone, you are expecting an MC to come with his own. And it turns out that the MC doesn't come with a microphone. Who will be blamed? Who will be blamed? Hello, let's tell ourselves the truth. When the client comes out, who will be blamed? <laughs> no client knows that an MC should come with his microphone. Once a client is paying you, he's paying you for your a complete set of equipment and your service. When they're paying the MC, they're just paying the MC to come and talk. They don't expect the MC to come with a microphone. I want us to understand this. And we are not actually here to argue this. But I want us to understand this. That client that you're going to work for does not know that an MC should come with a microphone. And when the need arises, you will be blamed as a DJ. And when everybody comes out, they will tell you, DJ, why you no carry your mic? Come. And you see the MC. The MC will just fold. And I'll be looking at you and the client. And at the end, no matter how good you are, how good you may be, the clients may conclude that you don't know the job. Yes, I understand that. But then, we should always have a backup plan. As always said, when going, if you expect an MC to come, with a microphone, his own microphone, equally go with your own. If the MC turns out to be there without a microphone, bring out your own. Work with the MC. Okay. <laughs> and then somebody said something that an MC will come, make all the money, pack the money, and that is where professionalism comes in. Hello. In exhibiting our jobs, we tend to grow. There is one thing I normally do. Spray me my money, oh, the money is mine. But before the end of the event, that shows how good you are as a DJ. I will create an avenue for you to play. And I will urge the audience to spray you money if you do well. I will introduce you. This moment is for the DJ. Come and appreciate him. DJ, take 10 minutes and show what you can do.
That is where you will now prove yourself if you're a professional DJ. You don't don't come and tell me that the money I have with me is for the DJ and the MC. I will create your avenue for you to make your money. Make your money. Hello. <laughs> no, you can take the microphone. You see that moment? Once I introduce the DJ, I am off. I am off. I don't mind how much you make there. I will give you the microphone. If you want to hype, hype. You want to shout, shout. Whatever you can do to make that money. Go ahead and do it. Make your money. Hello. So please, um, the Association of uh, Comedians and MCs already had a plan that we are going to have a very crucial meeting with the executives of the DJ so that we can settle a lot of differences that we've been receiving as reports. And that is going to happen very soon. So at this juncture, please, uh, I want you to permit me to hand over the microphone back to the MC. My name is MC I don't show, and thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, um, please bring it down. Um, the national chairman said he wants to ask you a question. So let's let's listen. DJs, you see, they say experience is the best teacher. One of the major issues we have with MC is that. Let me break it down. I don't know. Say the thing they painful. DJ will carry equipment come maybe a night before or morning. After he don't set up, do the sound check, listen. He will go back home, go back. Come sit down again. They play music, they go. Then, when it's about uh, 30 minutes to the event, you won't see one man where just they land from the drum. The shoe they shine. He face the shoe. You don't know, say the thing they pepper. Wait. Now, approach matters. Sometimes, some MCs, they behave normal. Some, they don't have respect. Who be, who be DJ? Where, where the DJ? Give me mic. You buy mic for me. That is one. Two, remember, DJ is not an MC. He's here to set sound. He has already said the sound. Why didn't you come in the morning? Let's do the sound check with your voice. Because after setting the sound, you now come about 30 minutes. <laughs> Which kind of microphone is this? DJ. DJ, which kind of microphone do they use? So, I set my sound to for people. I didn't set the voice. My own is, hello? <laughs> the microphone is working. Then you now come with your cockroach voice. <laughs> Which kind of microphone? It doesn't make sense. That's why we said it's better. Bring your own better microphone. I will plug it for you. Um, thank you very much, President. <laughs> DJs, like I said, professionalism is very important. The worst an MC can do is to how will I, how will I, is to talk to a DJ using the microphone. Hello? Can you, do you understand what I said? If I set my, if you set your sound and I come to check the microphone and it's not okay by me, I will walk to you. I will come to you. Please, can we adjust? This sound is not okay. Listen, the, the Association of Enugu State Comedians and MCs, we are taking a new phase. We are being trained currently. There is not going to be a repeat of such again as long as the person is a member of our association. We they suspend. You go on suspension. Before we, before we bring you in as a member of the association, we must monitor you. 
thank God the, the head of uh, NDLE is here. We, we, not, we, don't take, we don't take them any longer. You see, no, 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 no. No. As an entertainer, hello. As an entertainer, you are always being seen as a professional and somebody normal. But sometimes you try to approach a DJ and then the response of the DJ will even weaken your bones. When you come to a DJ, let the DJ equally respond to you maturely. That is understanding. If I come to you that the sound is not good, if it's something you cannot adjust, don't shout at me. I did not shout at you. You can tell me and I saw my microphone, Bill. Let, let's, let's just bring it down. The reason some MCs started coming with their own microphone is that most or some of the DJs, let me not use the word most, some of the DJs, the sounds or rather the microphones are not always good. So the ones that could afford the microphone decided to get their own. So where they come, they give it to you. Let's go back to the time we're using, um, what is it called, cassettes. And uh, How many MC was coming with their microphone then? How many? The DJ comes with the sound and the microphone all together. So that some MCs have started coming to an event with their own microphone doesn't mean that everybody should go and get their own microphone. So my presido, sir, it's all about understanding. I can never talk to a DJ in a rude manner. I've come to an event, DJ doesn't know me, and he decided to seize the microphone from me, not knowing I was the event planner of the job. I was the one that paid him. And he said I was not going to work. I left him. And after the client was able to just treat the matter the way he did, at the end of the job, he met the man, and the man said, go and meet that guy. He's the one that will pay your balance. So how will he now come and meet me? I uh, don't catch on, Abby. <laughs> so sometimes it's all about understanding. Understand whenever you see yourself in an event, hello, whenever you see yourself in an event, please just have it in mind that you can work with a madman. Just assume that the next person coming to that event is a madman. And you cannot be mad together with that person. Assume yourself you are the only person normal. If the person is shouting, don't shout. Other people will start looking at the person. Is this person normal? You must not shout. If you go to road safety training, they will tell you once you're on the wheels, assume every other driver to be a mad. So you drive your own and drive their own. You can't tell me because you are, you are at your lane and that go take trailer is coming before you. I want to stay in my lane. Will you try it? It's not. It's, now, would their life they go caught? Oh? You run first. Then at the end, you begin to shout to the driver, oh, what did they worry you? So it's all about understanding. Understand yourselves. Assume that the next person is a madman. Be the normal person. When the person is shouting, don't shout. That is it. Thank you. Time, no day for questions again, no. Okay, I'm going to take only, I'm going to take only two questions. One from Synergy and one from that, this lady here. Only two questions. Grand fingers, your own go pay me. And no, no talk. <laughs> DJs, DJs, I believe this thing I'm about to say right now, most of our DJs have experienced it. And um, I would start by this. Our president had his speech, and I know you were here. And then our colleague as well said something about hype, and I know you heard it. And then Saku. I know you've uh, mentioned it as well. Now, in the 80s, people who do hypes are DJs. You can use Jimmy Fox as an example, right, as a case study. He might be on the stage, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I want to put a song. I want you to nod your head and stamp your feet. People will follow up. Now, fast forward, um, DJs left that. A lot of DJs didn't uh, tap into that. And now... We in Enugu, if you are a DJ and you hype and you talk on the microphone of which is your own microphone, no, then you hear some MCs telling you uh, there is division of labor. Leave that one for the hype man. Now, I what, what I'm trying to say is that I think uh, one of our members have actually had issues with an MC regarding that. And in terms of the professionalism, I would want you to maybe tell your people that when the bride are dancing, let's say the couple are dancing, 
or when the music is on, you should let the DJ to play. That's one. And then secondly, let the DJ exercise his franchise by talking with his microphone. Like I have I've noticed uh, an MC bantering a DJ due to the fact that the DJ knows his job description and he's doing it. So what I'm trying to say in us trying to have a synergy together, please let us try and know, okay, yes, this is this people's original job and duty. Then, if they are doing it in an event, please, make una. We'll be our brother, we'll be MC. No, they tackle us. Thank you. Um, synergy, no vex. What is the work of an MC? An MC is a master of a ceremony. What does a master of ceremony do? Moderates without a music. Is a lie. Uh, listen, listen. Listen, hello, 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 hello. Moderate without the music. What then? How then does an MC compliment a DJ? Hello. No. See, there's, there's an angle that Synergy is coming from, and that angle is when a DJ will come to an event, decide to hide one microphone so that during dancing, you not tell your yeah, give me the microphone for me to use. That is the angle he's coming from. I understand him. Listen, listen, once it's time to dance, the work of an MC is to talk in an event. The moderation is being done through, through what? Through what? Through talking. He has every right to talk till the end of the event. He is the moderator. He has every right to talk till the end of the event. The MC is the moderator. He tells you when to play and when to stop. Do you understand me? The MC tells the DJ when to play and when to stop. Then if I don't have the microphone, how will I tell you? I will run to you and run back. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please, wait, I'm going to take that question from that lady. But um, as our chairman, MC I don't show, we started this uh, MC association together years back. Me and him and some other MCs. And to the glory of God, the association has gotten to a level that nobody can dispute it. Now, let me make you guys understand something. For MC and DJs to work together, there must be understanding. Pure understanding. Like me, eh? I am a friend to every DJ. I am a friend to every DJ. There's no DJ that will see me in an occasion that will not be happy that I'm there. You understand? If I finish up my, my event, I will go and meet DJ. DJ, how far? You get money, I go first as DJ. You get money, you go tell me black, I get small. I go from my own giver. You understand me? Now, why most DJs used to drag the microphone is because some MCs don't used to give them money. You understand? You understand me? No, 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 I'm, go I'm going to talk a little. Look, see now, Synergy, I, I went to an event with Synergy, um, let me say a few weeks ago. No, no, let me just say this briefly. A few weeks ago, Synergy was the DJ. I, I am a professional hype man. I am an MC and I do comedy. You understand? So as a DJ, if you see an MC who is a hype man in an occasion, eh, it's a bonus. Allow the hype man to do the job. You understand? I'll, uh, except the, the, the client paid you as a DJ and also as a hype man. No, that's just the fact. You understand? But as, as far as MC... He's a hype man. They paid him to come and hype. There are some, there are, there are some occasions you go to. You will see MC separate. You will see hype man paid separate. You will not see a DJ. You understand? So once you see a DJ, you see a hype man, you see another MC, just know that the work is being divided. It's a division of labor. When it gets to the time for the hype man, allow the hype man to do his job. You understand? So even if you want, even if the hype man did not appreciate you, Eh? The hype man did not appreciate you at the end of the occasion. From then, you will not know the kind of person he is. When that person jams you again in an occasion, like I will use DJ Roya as an example. If Roya called me for events, in Kotami is a black MC, eh? then get MCO, but I don't tell them when they call you as hype man. As you they come there, I beg go, oh, any money when you get, we'll go share on 50 50. In go tell me, I go say, ah, my guy, my guy, I go agree. I'll collect my pay. After the whole occasion, even 100K, I go and 50, whole 50, in agreement. 
You understand? That's my point. So let me just take one question from this lady and we are done. DJs. DJs. One beat, one voice. Um, MC, I want to say this. I know um, I've had this ish with an MC, you know, where it, and I know some of us too have experienced this. There's a, a client called me one time and we negotiated, agreed on a particular uh, price. Just two days to the event, because I was actually waiting for the payment, then two days to the event. I didn't, I didn't receive the, the money. So I called him. So when I called him, I was like, sir, I, I haven't gotten it, um, the payments yet. And he said, in his words, he said that an MC, an MC, Okay, not him. It was the person that referred me to this client that told me. So when I called him, I was like, your guy has not made payments yet. So this guy thought that after talking with him, he thought I've actually dropped the call. And then I heard him saying that I don't know why an MC would bring a DJ for this man when he has already concluded with this other DJ. Do you understand? So when I heard this, I dropped the call and I called him back. I was like, please, what is the name of this MC? And then he, he told me. I had to go through um, to the Projan group and I asked for the contact of this MC. And I called him. I was like, my name is Noni Ray. And I was supposed to work with you on a particular event. But I heard you said that you are not going to work with a female DJ. Please. I want to understand what your reasons are. He said that, yes, that he said something like that. He owned to that. And then he said his reasons was because the, the female DJ he worked with at Portacourt didn't give him uh, what he, you know. So I was like, okay, you said something like this. He said, yes. So my own point here now is, MCs, please. I know that sometimes you guys want to work with your OGs. You guys want to work with your, your person. You understand? But if you see that a client has already concluded with another DJ, leave this person to do the job. Leave the person to go for this job because that, that case brought a serious issues between... I'm even happy that I'm hearing that MCs have an association in Enugu. You know, where they don't have. They always fight. They don't have. And coming for event, sometimes when I go for an event, there's an MC, hype man, and the DJ. MC will talk, talk, finish, and give the hype man problem. They don't even ask, they don't even, like, you will be, me, sometimes, I'll be like, MC, give the hype man the mic, give the hype man the mic. Sometimes if I will even have to leave my stage to go and meet the MC. You are done. Please, give this hype man. He's fake. You understand? So, if you guys are having your meeting, I would is a plea. If you can address this, if a client has concluded with a particular DJ, but because this MC wants to work it's with his uh, OG, make it relax. Now street everybody. They, everybody won't make money. You understand? When that thing happened, I felt I felt bad. Let me tell you the truth. I felt bad because um, I don't already plan waiting. I won't use that money to. Yes. I don't plan waiting. I won't use that money to. If now full stuff, you go help me. If now another thing, you go help me. But um, the person just there like this, collect, collect the work out of my hand. Um, uh, he pay me, oh, I don't go lie, give you. So if there's anything you guys can do about that particular one, uh, we will appreciate. I know, I know, say no, be only me don't get this experience. Some people too have had it. Thank you. Okay, please put your hands together for her. That didn't have your oh, may you just talk and saram. Okay. DJs, DJs, please, uh, on behalf of all of us here, including the MC who spoke to us, please, I want us to end this section about DJs and MCs. It's a lecture. It's not a war. I think uh, the lecture, what I understand is that there is room for improvement on the part of the DJs who have our own flaws towards the uh, MCs and they also have against us. So, my dear friend, continue to speak to your people. We'll continue to speak to our people so that there will be a balancing. Thank you. Can we move to the next topic? Thank you.
Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, I don't sure. I think we should just cut it off. Oh, please. We have uh, we have a lot of time for this. Maybe some other time. So our chairman will meet with the DJ's chairman, and they will know find how to relate. Basically, they know here. Okay. Thank you very much. Then I don't have something um, information from um, um, the uh, MC One Mike. One Mike. Uh -huh. That thing we say make I tell them. Now what's in perfect? They always tell me. The most important thing in an occasion is understanding between MCs. Forget about money. Do your job professionally. If money go come, money go come. You understand? That is what Perfect always tell me. Anytime, anywhere, you go always repeat them. Black, forget about the money. Let's do the job. Streets, let's do the job. You understand? God bless us all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, let's just uh, get straight now to the next segment. And that's going to be the segment of uh, bringing up uh, Barista Oyabo to come talk to us briefly. And it's going to be about legal advice on contract agreement and service delivery. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you. DJs. DJs. One beat, one voice. Well, um, the protocols, please permit me to stand on the already established.